participated in Veterans Day events. There were so many events this year around the state. For two weeks, I think the commander and I were all over at events. It was hard to get up there, but good turnout. And I also want to give kudos to Jason. If you haven't seen Jason's video products covering some of the events lately, you're missing out. He's done a great job taking video and editing them. If you get a chance, take a look at some of his handiwork. It's just really heartening to see what he's done at some of these events. I mean, it started with the National Fair and uh, went flag raising, flag retirement, and all through Veterans Day week, all sorts of events, including a great event at the Montgomery Chamber of Commerce. They did a great job, well attended there. Really appreciate all the VFW members that showed up for that. Uh, Montgomery had an event at the stadium that was good, and we're in discussions with the city of Montgomery for next year, put on even more. There is even talk, it's tentative, about bringing back a Veterans Day parade. So uh, we're encouraging that, and we volunteered in the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs to kind of help lead that effort. So we'll see next year, we might bring a parade back to Montgomery. Meanwhile, Birmingham and Mobile and other towns had great parades and, and events surrounding those. Get new members that way too. Sir. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great recruiting opportunity. Um, all right, a segue um, into a topic I've talked about before. This is not a happy topic, but it's a topic we need to talk about. It's about mental health in general for veterans and especially veteran suicide. We are still seeing very high rates of veteran suicide in Alabama. There are lots of efforts going on at the federal, state, and private sector level to overcome that. I want to tell you about one that just culminated last week. I've mentioned it before, Operation Iron Ruck. The Student Veterans Associations at Alabama and Auburn got together last week and did a 151 mile ruck march to raise awareness of veteran suicides in Alabama. Believe it or not, I did the first 10 and a half miles of it. But I'm telling you, yeah, not bad for an old guy. Like, oh, I was going to say old something else. Hey, it was great. The best turnout I've seen, uh, mainly students, but a lot of others showed up for it and joined along the route. Um, just great event, great coverage, so it raised awareness and got a lot of donations to nonprofits to help with veteran mental health issues. Uh, that kind of um, topped off a lot of events that have happened over the last month, especially surrounding Veterans Day. And everyone seems to be understanding this is a really important topic. Connected with that, I may have mentioned this before, that this is a big deal. Alabama is part of a national opioid settlement. Long story behind this, but big pharmacy companies and others that over-prescribe opioids. If you're not aware, veterans are twice as likely to be um, hooked on opioids as a member, member of the general public. And it leads to other issues. It leads to homelessness, suicide, you name it. Uh, a lot of it's connected with uh, our unique service and uniform. Frankly, some of it is self-inflicted by the veteran system because for decades, veterans were over-prescribed opioids. And now we've got a problem on our hands. Well, as part of the o National Opioid Settlement, Alabama is slated to receive about $300 million in opioid settlement funds. And there's a commission that's been meeting to decide how to distribute those funds. The State Board of Veterans Affairs, my boss has met recently and passed a unanimous resolution urging the state to reserve 25% of those funds specifically for the veteran community because they're so heavily affected by the opioid epidemic and overdoses in this country. So. 
if you hear that news, it's a chance for VFW and other veteran service organizations to weigh in on a very important topic that could do some real good in helping the veteran community. So be on the lookout for that in the news. The Opioid Settlement Commission is going to get a lot of coverage. When you're talking that much money, you know, let me say this politely, the lines will be long trying to get at that money. And veterans need to be at the forefront saying, you need to preserve some of that money to support the veteran community. Um, at the federal level, the PACT Act, which is, gosh, was passed, uh, came into law in August of 2022. I've talked about this before, and I tell everybody, if you're a veteran from Vietnam forward, uh, who may have been affected by toxic exposures, everything from Agent Orange to burn pits, even if you had a claim before that was rejected, you need to look at your new benefits under the PACT Act. And we've been processing a lot of claims under the PACT Act, but the system is responding pretty well. It's taken about six months on average now to process a PACT Act claim, but I would urge you to look into a PACT Act claim. Everybody should know about the PACT Act now. There is another federal law that just came online earlier this year called the Compact Act. People get them confused, unfortunately. The Compact Act is the new development that addresses veteran suicides. And what the Compact Act does is it allows any veteran to go to any civilian emergency facility if they're having a mental health crisis and get immediate help and the federal VA picks up the bill for that. It can even include inpatient services. So the bottom line is, if you know a veteran, or God forbid you yourself find yourself in a mental health crisis, you go to the nearest emergency room now, tell them you're a veteran, and they should know about the Compact Act, admit you, give you the services that you need, and the federal VA will be notified and the veteran doesn't have to worry about it. Gosh, if I go in, it's going to cost me all this money. The federal VA will pick up the tab under the Compact Act now. That's a huge development for veterans. I'm so glad to see Storm Hoffman here. I got to know her when I was a civilian at Maxwell Air Force Base. Could not ask for a better airman and officer. I mean, um, I'm going to steal her thunder a little bit. She's involved in the planning for the air show that's coming up. If you don't know, in early April, Maxwell is going to have its first air show, I think, in seven years six or seven years has been since the last air show. The Blue Angels, yeah, the Navy is gonna be involved. And the Navy has decided the week before they're gonna have Navy Week in Montgomery. They're gonna bring a lot of admirals uh, to visit civic groups. Might even be an opportunity to have someone come to the VFW and just give a spiel about what's going on in the Navy. So that will be in April also? It'll be in April. In fact, we're meeting with the advance team for Navy Week, I think, uh, in our office later this week to talk about what they're going to do the week ahead of the air show. Um, and the I, air show, I will, go ahead, I will go ahead and say and defer to you. I won't schedule anything for April. And through your contacts, if you can. I'll see if I can get, get someone somebody. to come. Yeah. It's open, open invitation. The air show is going to be great. In addition to the Blue Angels, they're working on other aerial demo teams. We're going to have a presence there. We're going to make it about active duty and veterans and um, talk about benefits that veterans have earned because a lot of people who show up for the air show are veterans and their families. Uh, so keep that in mind. Do you remember the date storm? It's like uh, the 5th is the STEM day for schools. So if you have any children, grandchildren, or connections with the schools and you don't have an invitation for that STEM day, please let myself and Mr. Davis know. Um, and then the 6th and the 7th will be the open to the public uh, two-day air show. Do I hear that? April 6th and 7th is the actual air show at Maxwell. So it's a big deal. It's going to be a big, nice air show. First in a while. All right, two quick updates at the uh, state level, what we're working on. We still have an overwhelming demand for both our state veterans homes for long-term care and burial services. Um, you know, the World War II, Korean War generations, and now the Vietnam veterans are in need of those services. We are trying to keep up with demand. So we're expanding our state veteran cemetery in Spanish Fort. We expect to finish that expansion, which adds 4,000 burial plots in December. We're gonna have a grand opening in February for that project. 
Um, we are also, and I've been pretty open about this, we're in negotiations with the National Cemetery Administration to put another veteran cemetery in Alabama up in the Huntsville Decatur area. Because believe it or not, we don't have a veteran cemetery up in North Alabama. There is a geographic hole up in North Alabama. So in the next couple of years, we're gonna seriously uh, pursue that possibility around Huntsville Decatur area for another veteran cemetery. And last but certainly not least to address the state veterans home issue, we have the longest waiting list in the country to get into our state veterans homes in Alabama. We're just talking about this. Um, the demand for our long-term care is very high, but we are building a new veterans home in Enterprise. I was there last week with the mayor of Enterprise to get him a tour. It's about 80% complete and it should be open next summer. That'll alleviate a lot of the backlog that we have in the waiting list to get into our state veterans homes. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions anybody has. A couple of people have already said they wanted to talk to me, so I'll definitely stick around and try to address any individual and questions or concerns. Recognize our newest member, uh, who is also a member of the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 607, uh, to come up. He's going to talk with us about uh, funeral services that the VVA can can conduct for any veteran within about 100 miles of Montgomery, I think he said. So he's gonna come up and talk with us about that. Uh, and, uh, cause there's not really, you know, the problems with having so many veterans pass away and you can't always get a, a burial detail from Maxwell or Fort Rooker or whatever the name is now. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, there's sometimes there's just too many that pass away in one day. And so uh, they're making an effort, uh, the BBA is making an effort to uh, make sure that no veteran goes unrecognized without a, a full service military uh, funeral. So with that, I would like to ask Claire to come up and uh, talk to us about what the BBA can do. Thank you for, for having me. I'm very happy that I joined this organization. Uh, it fits well with, uh, with the Vietnam Veterans of America, which I joined months ago, uh, hasn't been a year. Uh, but I got myself into the honor guard because uh, uh, I, I just thought it was a good thing to do. Um, people are, like Robert says, uh, have, some of them don't know that they could get honor guard services and some just don't, don't don't think they exist. And a lot of people try to get them and they're lucky if they get two guys to fold a flag and with a machine play taps. That's pretty much what you're gonna get from the active duty people. Um, at the VBA uh, chapter 607, we do uh, a full honor guard. We have uh, a color guard for the flags. We have uh, people who do the entire presentation, not for funerals, but for other organizational needs. But for funerals, we have a fold the flag, we have a, uh, a gun salute, um, a three round volley, and we have between two and five shooters, I being one of them. Um, we have M1 Grand. Uh, we practice a lot. Uh, we do a pretty good job as a cohort of mine right here, Don Reed is also a member and one of the rifle. Um, <clears throat> what we require, and everybody should think of this, if you haven't done it, if you have, if you're young and have parents or if it's you, um, you need to get you a form and be ready to get out the funeral director for a flag. The funeral home furnishes the flag, they're reimbursed by the VA. But we do, do not furnish the flag. We do, however, fold it and present it to the next of kin. Um, we, uh, we didn't have uh, the volleys fired, and then we have live taps, and we have a great taps player. And it's a lady, and her daughter also plays taps. And on occasion, we can get echo taps. And if you've never heard echo taps, It'll bring tears to your eyes. 
they get a distance apart and one plays slightly behind the other. And it, it's an awesome, awesome thing. Um, we will go up to 100 miles to any cemetery. Uh, we require or we, we request four days notice so that we can gather the, the people. We're all volunteers uh, and you know people have, have lives but we try to put it together. Uh, within 100 miles we'll travel. There is no cost for, for any of this. No expense to, to, to family or from anybody. We, we can take care of it ourselves. Um, if we cannot do a funeral for a veteran, we'll do a, a, one later at a graveside with the family. We will come and give them the honor they deserve. We all deserve military honors when we die. Uh, we, we, paid, we paid the price already. So, we, um, is there any questions? That I can, yes. What, what if it's not a burial? What if the person's been cremated? What, how does the that same, same thing. Same thing. Same thing. The, I don't know exactly how they do the flags on a, on a cremation, but uh, they deserve the same honors as regular burial. Usually the flag is taken off of the casket right. and folded. Right. Uh, but the flag can be unwrapped and folded and then presented. Yes. Uh, you do it for veterans of any not, any veteran, not just a Vietnam veteran. Not just Vietnam, but mostly uh, there's only only so many we can do. Right. Okay. Uh, but World War II and the Korean War vets, we we we'll try to accommodate everybody that we can. So we're not just for Vietnam. What's what's the number to call? Uh, I've got three numbers. I'm going to give them to Robert. If you you'll put it on on the site and uh, perhaps an email. There are three people, including myself, to call. Uh, if you have someone who has hospice or is close to the end, you may want to start putting that in, in, in progress to consider works so you we'll know it's coming. We have, we have one of our members right now who was given two weeks uh, few days ago and uh, we don't know when but we're expecting at any time it'll, you know, it'll be our call and he's one of us so. um, the uh, if, if you haven't already done it dig up your DD 214 if you don't if you don't have it bring your social security number and your ID to the VA you can go on Perry Hill and they'll get you one Oh yeah, all you gotta have is your social security number and picture ID. Uh, you'll need that and I've, I've already done my funeral arrangements for myself and my wife. And I already have that information in their file so they know the only thing I cannot do myself is order the flag. So my daughter in my case will have to order the flag. That's the only thing she'll have to do. Uh, any other questions? I was under the assumption that that all would take place from the funeral home. It does not. The, the funeral home, if you fill out a form, will provide you with flags. That's what you get. That's what you get. We, we need to contact uh, Alabama Heritage and Greenwood and maybe a few others, you know, from the travel and let them know. Uh, when I joined here, I was wondering why aren't we communicating more? Because a lot of guys in this organization is you know, Vietnam vets, and, and a lot of Vietnam vets are in this organization. Count me and Don, I'm sure others of, of you are too. Uh, but people are, are, are dying, and their families don't know what to do. They're never they've not been told what to do. So they, they think it's going to get taken care of, and you just ask a, a good question there, and it just doesn't happen, and then everybody goes home. Well, if we can't do it, we'll do it after. We'll, we'll do a memorial service for it, for the veteran at, at the graveside or wherever it, it be. Yes, sir. Are we all in uniform? Yes, sir, and I'm wearing it. Um, it's it's multi-service. We do Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force. Uh, it's, uh, 
it's it got a black boot hat that I'm not wearing, but it, this, this is what it is. Uh, but we, we do blouse boots at funerals, but otherwise, for no particular service. Turn around and show you back, too. Yeah. Look at the back, guys. Isn't that cool? Yep. Any other questions? I'm going to leave these numbers with the route. Every time you want to come here, as y'all have noticed, we've been videoing the um, different programs and stuff. If y'all have your phones available, open up to YouTube and go out and type in DFW Post 96 and subscribe to our videos. We're also starting to do um, veteran spotlight videos. We did uh, three of them last month at the uh, nursing home or uh, Oak, Grove Oak Grove Inn um, independent living facility we visited. And we'd also like to start doing some uh, veteran spotlights of post members. So if anybody is willing to sit down with us for five, 10 minutes, 20 if you'd like to be able to tell us a little bit about yourself, your military service, uh, things you've done and that kind of stuff. We'd love to be able to video it and get it out there to so, uh, America and stuff, what its veterans have done for them and what we will continue to do. So if y'all have any questions, feel free to ask. Look at our Facebook posts, a lot of the videos get shared there. But please go on YouTube, subscribe, and that way it will let you know when new videos and stuff pop up. Let your friends know about it, let your family members know about it so we can get it going as far as we can. You have to get like 3,000 subscribers to get any money off it. So the odds of us ever getting to that point, we only have 19 right now, are probably slim to none. But hey, you can dream. <laughs>